I think it is uh, pretty much the same debate, but I think the the stakes are greater and the whole situation has intensified. The big difference, I guess, now is that we've had four years or nearly four years of the Trump administration, and I think also there's the fact that the the, the, the Democratic National Committee was accused and found guilty, really, of uh, sabotaging Bernie Sanders. It's going to be more difficult to do it again. So what we've got is a kind of a discontent with mainstream politics in each of the two parties, and what we've got seem to be getting towards is a clarification within the Democrats about what kind of party their voters would like, what kind of budgets, what kind of policies on social education and health care and so on. And that contrasts very sharply within the party with Buttigieg and uh, Joe, Joe Biden, but also with the Trump administration, as you've just shown with your, his budget, his budget plans. On that note mm. about the divergence in terms of mm. what Democratic voters seem to want from their candidates, uh, mm. although we you know, had no clear winner from those mm. Iowa, the Iowa caucus, no Democratic candidate mm. won the backing of much more than 25% mm. of the vote. So, so what does that mean? What are the implications mm. of that come November when the Democrats yeah. are going up against President Trump? Yeah, that's a really big question. And I think it's a bit early to say. We have to see what happens in New Hampshire. Uh, then there's Super Tuesday in a three weeks time and I think that things will be a little bit clearer but if the process which appears to be ongoing is that there's a clarification and a kind of polarization then I think the big question is can a socialist candidate defeat President Trump and I think in a large number of polls head-to-head -head, practically every Democratic nominee uh, where there's been some polling kind of projections defeats President Trump. And isn't that the only criteria that matters in a sense for the DNC is is the ability to beat Trump in a head-to-head -head. and you point out rightly that a lot of them when they've done yeah. that match up as a hypothetical yes. do succeed but what their policies are in a sense are irrelevant aren't they? That is also a very interesting question. Um, I'd say there are two things I think on the one hand correct if there's party loyalty and Recent interviews, Hillary Clinton had to be really pushed very hard to say she would support a Sanders candidacy for November. And I think that hints at the kind of party that the Democratic Party is. And it's very much a kind of big money donations from Wall Street corporations and so on. And a large part of their kind of attitude towards where the U.S. should be going, what kind of candidate can win, really is focused around that. So I'm not sure that there will be a great disappointment uh, if Sanders were to lose from that perspective in November. What so I like? wouldn't, wouldn't say that there's going to be necessarily unified party. And we've got Mike Bloomberg in the wings waiting for March and Super Tuesday because he's a possible candidate that who could emerge as a kind of dark horse with his billion dollar uh, budget for the election. So I think that the, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on the right of the party which is still has to be sort of clarified. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.